Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Saba, and today we're investigating a fundamental concept in asset pricing, quantity finance, and portfolio management in general, which is the Fama Range three-factor asset pricing model. It is an extension of the most well-known and perhaps most frequently used to this day asset pricing model, which is CAPA, or Capital Asset Pricing Model, which allows to extract the expected return of a particular stock or cost of equity of a particular company by using just the risk fair rate prominent on a particular market, which would be the yield of a government bond, uh, the expected return of the broad market index, for example, S&P 500 for US, 40 to 50 for UK, that kind of thing, as well as the market beta of the stock in question, that is the variability of the stock's return in relation to the market return or market risk measure. However, historically, researchers have investigated or discovered uh, multiple types of stocks that have got their performance significantly overestimated or underestimated by Kappa. Basically, some classes of stocks have demonstrated much higher expected returns than warranted by Kappa. So their high returns could not have been explained by their market risk exposure by their beta alone. One of the earliest such examples were small stocks, stocks with small market capitalization. In the 1980s, it has been widely found that those stocks, even though they tend to have higher betas, still have got their returns much higher than the couple of expectations. And uh, there have been many explanations that researchers tried to assemble or propose to uh, reconcile this with the Kappa model. However, uh, most of them have been found inconclusive or intellectually unsatisfying. That, in turn, had led academics to believe that there is something inherently risky about small stocks in comparison to large stock or blue chips, which um, is not captured necessarily by their market risk exposure or beta. That pretty much there is not a single systematic risk factor on the market, which is the market factor, but there are also other systematic risk factors that cannot be uh, reduced to it. And uh, size can be one of those risk factors. And the performance of, or performance difference, rather, of small stocks, stocks with low market capitalization against big, large stocks, stocks with high market capitalization, this particular spread has become a risk factor in its own right. And it has augmented the capital asset pricing model and became the second factor. The third factor in the Farmer French three-factor model is the value factor, which um, accounts for the very similar regularity that value stocks, stocks with high book-to-market ratios, or stocks with low price-to-book ratios, or in less common uh, uses, stocks with low price-to-earnings ratios, uh, outperform growth stocks. Stocks with low book-to-market ratios, uh, high price-to-book ratios and high price-to-earnings ratios. And this spread, spread between value and growth, has also been found to be quite um, independent of either market or size. And that's why it has been uh, introduced as a value risk factor, uh, just as the size risk factor, and uh, those two additional uh, risk exposures, some systematic risk proxies, have um, constituted the Farmer Frame Three Factor model, with the market factor remaining there uh, as well. And uh, again, uh, there has been a lot of uh, research directed at trying to understand what are the sources of risk, in particular, that those 
uh, factors proxy for. So again, what is um, necessarily riskier about small stocks than big stocks that is not proxied by the market, or what is more riskier about what is riskier about value stocks than growth stocks, rather than uh, what is there in the market factor. Uh, there is still no consensus about the theoretical source of those systematic risk factors. However, they have been found to work reasonably well empirically, and therefore they have been used, at least in academia, ever since they've been proposed in 1992-93, bar the extensions of the model that we'll perhaps talk about in the later videos. To motivate those asset pricing models, I wanted to show you how to apply this model and how the results of this model application are different to CAPM and how to interpret the results of the uh, Farmer French refactor model using four uh, Vanguard family ETFs. We've got monthly uh, total return indices for them from February 2004 until May 2022. And those are the Vanguard Value Fund, the Vanguard Small Value Fund, Vanguard Large Cap, Blue Chip Fund, and the Vanguard Growth Fund. So using those four uh, fund return dynamics, we'll be able to uh, see how those factors actually work in practice. Here, we first have to calculate the excess returns of the four uh, funds. Again, we use monthly data, so the impact of the risk-free rate is non-negligible. Monthly risk-free rate cannot be always assumed to be zero, as you can do with daily returns most of the time. And we also need to take into account the fact that the factor data that is readily available from the uh, Kenneth French database website for uh, United States and for uh, other regions, for example, you can get factors for developed markets, for European markets, for Japan, for emerging markets, and you can get much more factors than just those three plus the risk for rate. Those factors are by uh, default multiplied by 100. So this is minus 1.32 so we have to take this into account when calculating our returns to test against those factors. So for the Vanguard Value Fund, we calculate the ratio of consecutive total return indices, multiply it by 100, subtract 100, and subtract the relevant risk-free rate. And the risk rate is the same for all assets, so we lock it uh, column-wise and press Enter. And then we can drag it across for all four funds and bottom right click throughout the sample. And here we can see that we've got 219 sample months. So let's apply both CAPM and Pharma French Refactor for the Vanguard Value Fund and see how the coefficients can be interpreted. So for the CAPM, we apply linest to this area of returns for Vanguard Value, as well as just introduce the market factor. Again, CAPM is a single factor model. We need uh, the constant to estimate the alpha, and we need the additional statistics to get the standard error, the R squared, to allow us to explain the results more fruitfully. And here we see that the beta of Vanguard values are quite close to 1, 0 0.94, and there is a small negative alpha, around uh, 1.6 basis points per month, which is quite negligible. And then we can test for the statistical significance of these coefficients. For beta, I'll test for the statistical significance uh, taking the difference from 1. So let's um, calculate the coefficient minus 1 divided by the standard error. This will allow us to see whether a particular fund is defensive, that is, having a beta much lower than 1, aggressive having a beta much higher than 1, or roughly in line with the market exposure. Uh, and for the alpha, we just divide the coefficient by the respective standard error. And then we can test for the significance uh, of those t stats using a two-tailed t distribution, inputting the absolute value of, of the t stat and the degrees of freedom over here. So we see that the, uh, according to Kappen, the value fund is defensive, having a, a beta, market beta of much lower than one, at least statistically significant deviation from one in the negative direction, and the alpha is statistically insignificant, meaning that it's basically a defensive fund that has a risk-adjusted return on par with what you would expect according to Kappa. For the three-factor model, we 
perform the same manipulation, regressing our value access returns onto those three factors, market size and value. And here we can uh, divide the coefficients by the respective standard errors for value and size. Uh, here uh, it's um, useful to remember that those are performance spreads. So those are zero investment portfolios of small minus big and high minus low. So here the beta can be interpreted around zero and not around one as we do with the market factor because the market factor is a portfolio with no shorts, just a value weighted per market index. So here we calculate the t-stats for value and size. For the market, we simply calculated um, around one to again test for defensive, aggressive, or uh, just in line with the market. And for the alpha, we divide again the coefficient by the stand error. And we test for significance using again two-tailed t-distribution, absolute value of the t-stat, and the degrees of freedom for this model, which again are a little bit lower because we include two more uh, factors. So the degrees of freedom would be reduced by two compared to kappa or by four if we compare it to the sample size, sample size of 219. And here we can see the following. First of all, the Vanguard value fund is still defensive. Uh, it has a, a market beta which is um, significantly lower than one. It has a positive value beta, meaning that the Vanguard value fund is geared toward the long side of the HML factor. The HML factor is high book to market minus low book to market or value minus growth. So the Vanguard value fund invests in value stocks. And that's again very intuitive, meaning that, well, the Vanguard fund does exactly what it promises to do. It invests in value stocks, which is again intuitive and uh, quite obvious thinking about it. However, it also has a negative size beta, meaning that the Vanguard value fund is geared towards the short side of the small minus big factor. And as the small minus big factor longs small stocks and shorts large stocks, it means that the Vanguard value fund is uh, more geared towards large caps or blue chip stocks. So effectively, the Vanguard value fund is not only a value fund, but it's a large value fund. And that's something that you uh, couldn't have um, known from reading the name of the fund alone. And it's also slightly defensive. So we can see here how the Pharma French refactor model allows us to um, understand the risk exposure profile, or at least the style, the strategy of a particular fund way better than just reading the fund name alone. And uh, what we see in the coefficients is consistent with what is reported in the name when it is reported. So then gut value has a positive value exposure, meaning that's indeed a value fund, but it's also a large cap, slightly defensive fund. And let's implement this model for all uh, other three funds that remain. But what is another important um, thing to notice is that the R squared of the power price three factor is quite a bit larger than the R squared of kappa. Obviously, Vanguard ETFs are quite diversified, meaning that the R squared would be high in Kappa regardless. However, even an R squared of 0.9 that Kappa shows here is improved substantially upon to 0.96, which means that 96% of variation in monthly returns of Vanguard uh, value fund is explained in the three-factor model, which is indeed an exceptionally good result. We could obviously use, have used the restricted F test to see whether these two factors add in explanatory power. However, given how large those T stats are in magnitude, this is not warranted in this particular case. Let's move on to estimating the same models for the Vanguard small value and uh, interpret the results accordingly. So this is the uh, Kappam estimation for Vanguard small value. And... Uh, this is the Pharma French three-factor model estimation for the Vanguard small value. We can quite easily just drag the Y variable around and interpret the new uh, freshly emerged Linus templates and t-tests. So here we see that Kappa actually shows that the small value uh, Vanguard fund is an aggressive fund, having a beta of 1.17, way in excess of the market exposure of one. 
However, what Farmer French 3 factor model um, undercovers is this aggressive content of the fund is fully subsumed by the size and value factors. The beta of the Vanguard small value fund in the Farmer French 3 factor model is statistically indistinguishable from one. So it just gives you the average market risk exposure. What it also gives you are positive size and value exposures, meaning that the Vanguard small value fund is geared towards the long sides of both the SMB factor, small stocks, and the HML, value stocks, meaning that Vanguard small value delivers exactly what it promises. It delivers average market exposure, which is, uh, again, something that you cannot see in CAPM, as well as it uh, delivers positive and quite substantial value and size exposures. These T-stats are absolutely massive, and those P-values are way below 1%. The alphas are insignificant in both of the models. However, it's even closer to zero in the form of rich refactor, meaning that all abnormal returns uh, that have potentially uh, been generated by this fund are fully explained by the three factors. Now, proceeding to the Vanguard large cap fund, we can see that CAPM shows it's slightly defensive. Uh, a beta of 0 0.98, which is um, different from 1 at 5%. And in the three-factor model, we can see that uh, the exposures um, are as follows. For the market exposure, it's actually has flipped to the other side of 1, and this is actually marginally significant, so it's either slightly aggressive or it's just in line with the market, depends on what confidence interval you choose, 5% versus 10%. Its value exposure is roughly zero. Again, this um, coefficient is both statistically insignificant, a huge p-value, as well as um, very um, close to zero, even if you look at the magnitude of the coefficient itself. However, the size coefficient is negative and overwhelmingly significant meaning that this particular fund is geared towards the short side of the SMB, meaning that it's geared towards large stocks, which is exactly what this fund promises. Uh, as well as with the alphas, we can see that the alpha of this fund is again astronomically small, uh, less than a basis point in magnitude, meaning that three factors fully explain the performance of the large cap fund. And finally, for the growth fund, we'll see that first, it's neutral as per CAPM with a, a positive alpha of five basis points, which is insignificant. For the three factor model, we can apply it analogously. And we'll see that the uh, three factor model shows um, the uh, picture that we perhaps have expected. First of all, the value factor is negative, uh, quite sizable, minus 0 0.3, and statistically significant at 1% meaning that the uh, HML exposure of the Vanguard growth factor is negative, meaning that it's geared towards the short side of HML, meaning that it mostly invests in growth stocks. That's exactly what uh, the fund promises. Less intuitively, we see that the size exposure is uh, small, minus 0 0.1, but uh, statistically significant 1%, meaning that it is ultimately a blue chip, a large cap fund, although it doesn't show it in the name. The market uh, coefficient is significantly higher than one, meaning that this fund is aggressive. That's something that we haven't seen in CAPM. And the alpha is substantially reduced. Here it shows even a higher p-value and a much smaller magnitude than in CAPM, meaning that the uh, Vanguard Growth Funds alpha and Vanguard Growth uh, fund returns are much better explained again by the Farmer French 3 factor. And this is the motivation behind the development of the Farmer French 3 factor model, the interpretation of its econometric application, um, as well as some logic on how to perform style and factor exposure analysis on fund returns. If you would like me to deliver a video on the Farmer French Cahard 4 factor model or the 5 factor model, or go deeper into how to construct your own factors, please leave a like on this video and tell me so in the comments. In the meantime, 
Stay tuned, and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon.